What I'm talking about is KD, which is something that we use to discuss binding affinity. So how much molecules like to bind to each other. So as you can imagine, this is a really important topic because if you're thinking about, um, you have a big sea of molecules and in order to actually like do things, they often need to like stick to each other um, to work. And so you can think about like a drug sticking to a molecule and stopping it or a substrate um, of an enzyme. So like something that the molecule is going to work on, it needs to stick to it first. Um, so binding affinity is this really important concept, but it gets really confusing because the lower the KD, the higher the affinity, which is kind of opposite of what you might think if you were expecting a bigger value for a higher affinity. Um, so to understand why, let's take a look at what KD actually is and what we're talking about. So imagine you have two molecules, A and B, and you can think of them kind of like romantic partners. Um, and so you actually have lots and lots of copies of A and lots and lots of copies of B, and they're all identical. Um, so, um, but the, we can represent how much of each we have, so the, so the concentration of each, using brackets. So the brackets around the, um, the molecules, that just means concentration of. And you can think of it kind of like a little house. So if you were to, and we can take a molecular census. So we have our little house of A's and we can count how many A's there are and house of B's and how many B's there are. And so they're not actually like in these houses, they're floating all around the place. Um, but for the sake of the analogy, just imagine the brackets like representing houses where you can count how many of these various things there are. So the A's are in one house, the B's are in one house, and then you have this house of A, B, so the married. So then you take your molecular census, so you get a snapshot, and you want to see how many um, A, B couples there are compared to the singles. Um, and so to do, um, you could, importantly, you want to do this once they are at, um, so the idea is basically the more that the um, couples like each other, the more likely they are to get married if they meet. And the less um, likely they are to get divorced once they're married. So if you were to think of like when the um, if you were to take that census to try to see how many married couples there are, it's going to depend on how much they like each other. So that's represented with um, something with, called the, the forward rate constant, K on. Um, and then how likely they are to get divorced, um, which is the rate constant K off. Um, and so, and also the concentrations of them. So the more copies of A that there are, the more copies of B that there are, the more likely A is to run into B. And so even if they don't really like each other that much, if you run into each other over and over and over, there's a high probability that you're just gonna like bind by chance kind of. So you can think of it in terms of probabilities. So the more chances, the higher the affinity, the more probable it is that you actually are going to stick together if you come together, but you need to have be a higher chance of coming together, which is um, dictated by the concentrations. And so if there are, if you like each other a lot more, even if there are less of the binding partner, when you meet them, you're going to cling to them. You're going to want them. So there's, um, you're going to see more of them stuck, even though you have less um, a concentration. So the important thing to keep in mind is that by looking at the concentration and the amount that is bound, you can see, um, get an idea of how much they like each other. Um, and importantly, this happens, you want to measure this when you reach dynamic equilibrium. So what this means is that the rate of them marrying is equal to the rate of them divorcing. Um, and so for every couple that gets married, there's a couple that gets divorced. So if you were to take your census, um, once you've reached equilibrium, you can take your census at any point and it would look identical. Um, so at the molecular level, it's, it's still dynamic. So th that exact A molecule is probably with a, might be with a different B molecule. Um, but they're all identical copies. So it looks exactly the same. So we say you're at a dynamic equilibrium. And when you're at dynamic equilibrium, 
you can use thermodynamics um, and equilibrium binding. So basically the idea is that you have that forward rate constant K on and that reverse rate constant um, K off, and but the actual rates are going to depend on the concentrations of each two. So when you're dealing with kinetics, you want to look at the speed of the reaction. So we'd be actually trying to figure out that K on and that K off. But with thermodynamics, we're basically saying, okay, let's look, forget about how we got here. Let's look at where we are. So let's look at what the concentrations are of these various things and use that to figure out what the affinity is. And we can do this by varying the concentrations because as we were talking about before, the higher the concentration, the less, um, the more chances there are to stick together. Um, so the more likely there are to bind, even if they don't like each other that much. So basically we can take one partner, we can vary the, con keep that constant partner's concentration constant and vary the concentration of the other partner um, and use this to figure out how much they like each other. So in, you'll get, when you do this, you'll get a curve like this. So this is a, um, the, here I'm showing a protein binding to um, a labeled RNA, which is something that I've done it before and I talk about it in the slot plot um, slide I'll link to. Um, but basically, so on one axis, so here on the x-axis, we have the concentration of B. On the y-axis, we have the concentration uh, or the proportion of A that it's bound. So at the top, we have all the A bounds. So that'd be like all A is married. The bottom, all of A is single. So at the um, bottom left corner, so if you have um, no B, then all of the A is single. At the top, if you have all, if you have an excess of B, all of the A is going to be bound. And so you reach this like plateau. But at the point where you have half of A bound, that's what we, the concentration of B that gets you half of A bound is called the KD. Um, and we often draw this in logarithm form. Um, so I have a post on logarithms if you're confused, but basically it's a way for us to kind of like squish the axis so that we can fit more values in. So we can span like one from, if we were in a log 10, we could span um, 1 to 10 in a single tick, and then 10 to 100 in another tick, and then 100 to 1,000 in another tick. So we could have, we can cover a wider span in a shorter um, space so that you don't have all your smaller values really cramped together and then your bigger values like way out in right field, left field, whatever. Um, so when you do graph it like that, then you get this sort of S-shaped thing where you have the KD being your inflection point where you go from less than half A bound to um, more than half A bound. And so that point at which you reach that, the concentration of B that gets you to that point is your KD. So here on the left, you on the green, you have a lower KD. And in the orange, you have a higher KD. So you can see that with when you have in that green where you have a lower KD, that means it takes less of B for all uh, for half of A to be bound. So it takes less of those encounters between A and B for A to actually like in bulk get half bound. So that means that there's a higher affinity. So with a higher affinity, you're going to see a lower KD and it's going to be shifted more to the left. When you have, um, so for the orange where you have a higher KD, that's a lower affinity. So it means you need more B. You kind of need to like flood A with B in order for half of A to be bound. Um, and so we can represent um, KD in other terms, in math terms, as the concentration of A times the concentration of B over the concentration of A times B. And often the concentrations we're dealing with are in molar, so that's capital M, and it means moles per liter, um, where mole is 6 times 10 to the 23rd, and I have a post on that too, but um, basically it's just a constant um, number, kind of like a dozen. Um, but the reason that, and the D stands for dissociation constant, and so KD is actually 1 over KA, which is the association constant. Um, so if you had the association constant, then you would have a higher value for a higher affinity, but you'd have weird units, m to the negative 1. So we use KD, 